Ghosts 13, with the star of Paramount Pictures, Alan Ladd as Dan Holliday. Dear Dan, knowing your box 13 angle, I hope what I have to offer is intriguing enough to tempt you. At least I think it can be interesting. As a matter of fact, Dan, this thing has got to the point now where it's becoming downright vicious. It scares me a little. What the thing is, I'll tell you when and if I see you. If you can drag yourself away from Tom for a few days. If you can drag yourself away from Tom for a few days, consider this letter an invitation to join me at the country home of Bernard Trendler, my cousin. Enclosed are the directions for getting there. I'll meet you at the station. Wire me first, as ever, Alex. Yeah, it sounded harmless and simple. Two words I'd never apply to murder. And now, back to Box 13 and Dan Holliday's newest adventure, Death is No Joke. I don't think you should go, Mr. Holliday. And why not, Susie? Well, every time you accept an invitation like this, something bad happens to you. Susie, every time someone reads that ad in the Star Times, it means trouble. (laughs) But here I am, still alive and kicking. You just better watch out. You're not intolerable, you know. Well, thanks, Susie. But did you mean intolerable? Sure. Uh, Like Achilles was after he was dipped in the river stink. Oh. (laughs) It was the sticks, and you mean invulnerable. Oh, intolerable, invulnerable. You could get hurt. Okay, we'll see. Oh, by the way, did you send that wire to Alex? Oh, of course I did. Oh, good girl. Well, expect me when you see me. So long, Susie. Dan! Hey, Dan! Dan! Alex, how are you? Dan Holliday. So you're still alive. Oh, huh? why not? It's a good idea. <laughs> Is this your luggage? Oh, yes, yes. Just that flat stuff. Good. My car's just around the other side of the depot. This way. Am I supposed to ask what your letter meant? Or do I wait until you get ready to tell me? Wait till we get into the car. That's it. Blue convertible. Well, you've done all right. (laughs) There's no motor under the hood. (laughs) Hop in. How's Ruth? Oh, great. Any children yet? No, not yet. Oh, now look, I thought you'd have about five by now. (laughs) Maybe. What's on your mind, Alex? You're worried about something. Yeah, I don't know whether I am or not, Dan. Look, uh, maybe asking you to stick an oar in this was... Well, presuming upon friendship. That's what friendship's for? Yeah, it's up to a point. Okay, let's get to the point. Well, it's practical jokes. I knew you'd look blank at that. Uh, I'm glad I didn't disappoint you. But what's the angle? Practical jokes. Go ahead. Ruth and I are guests at Bernard Trendler's. He's my cousin. You ever heard of him? Oh, yes, yes. Showed up not too long ago to claim a fortune, didn't he? Yes, that's right. He ran away from home when he was 17. He was gone 15 years. Uh, Recently... uh, his father, that's my uncle, he died and left the entire Trendler fortune to him. If he hadn't been found, it would have been divided among the rest of us. But he showed up and claimed it. So, where do the practical jokes come in, and why? Ruth and I have been here for a week and a half now. Every day, there have been two or three practical jokes playing. At first, they were ordinary, not very funny, just amusing. But... But what? Now they're getting vicious, mean, contemptible. How do you mean that? Just that way. Hmm. Who's the funny man? We don't know. Any idea? Nope. That's why I've asked you to come up. Oh, and look, Dan. Don't let on I told you. Let me do the talking when I introduce you and take your cues from me, huh? I see. I'm to be the silent observer, is that it? Well, figure it out for yourself. Could I or anyone else call in the police? No, because no one's been hurt. Yet. Hey, you say that as though you expect trouble in large chunks. I do, Dan. I do. Somebody's going to get hurt. And badly. Alex drove on to the Trendler place. There was nothing else he could tell me about the practical jokes. Then we pulled up before we got to the house. Because a tall, thin man was walking down the drive. Alex stopped the car and spoke softly to me. That's Bernie Trendler coming down the drive. What do I say or do? How do I explain my presence? Now leave that to me. Just take the cues as I throw them. Uh, Bernie! Hey, Bernie! Alex? Is that you, Alex? Yeah. We'll get out of here. Pick up your bag later. I've been looking for you, Alex, and uh, 
Oh, I beg your pardon. Bernie, I'm afraid I'm guilty of a guest's worst crime. Dragging in a friend. Oh, nonsense. Don't talk like that. <laughs> Dan, this is my cousin Bernie Trendler. Bernie, Dan Holliday. How do you do? Fine. You? I'm sorry I barged in like this, but I but I haven't seen Alex in quite a while. Dan's a writer, Bernie. I thought he might, uh, well, stop over a day or so. He's, um, he's going away soon. Is that right, Dan? Uh, oh, yes, I'm going away. Well, of course it's all right. Plenty of room. Oh, well, thank you. It's very nice of you. Oh, not at all. Uh, if you'll excuse me, I've got to see the gardener about a couple of things. Uh, Alex, have Elsie show Dan his room. Sure thing. Thanks, Bernie. Not at all. Uh, glad to have you, Dan. So that's Bernard Trendler. Why do you say it like that? Like that? As though you didn't believe it. Oh, I gave you that idea. I don't know. Any man who's inherited a $20 million fortune has no right to look that worried. He has. Huh? What's that mean? There are two people in this house who hate him. Hate him enough to kill him. Well, with that, Alex took me into the house. The maid showed me to my room, and, well, I saw no one else until later that afternoon. Then I walked into the library on the ground floor. There were two people seated there. I stopped at the door. Well, hello. <laughs> Who are you? Oh, my name is Holiday, Dan Holiday. I'm looking for Alex. Oh, he's looking for Alex, Martha. All right, let him look for Alex. Have you tried looking under some rocks, Mr. Ruck? Uh, Mr. Ruck? Oh, Holiday, Dan Holiday. Oh, did you just arrive? Just after lunch. Too bad. The lunch was horrible. You didn't help it, Martha. I didn't try to, Henry. You don't have to try, my dear. Well, I suppose we may as well introduce ourselves. I'm Henry Trendler. This is my wife, Martha. How do you do? I'm Bernie's cousin. Oh, I I've met Mr. Trendler. Isn't that nice? Henry, I'm going down to the lake. Well, don't go out too far, my dear. I don't know how to swim, my dear. Yes, I know that. Goodbye. Well, nice to have met you, Mr. Uh... Uh, Mr. Uh... Holiday. Oh, she remembers Mr. Holiday. It's just one of her irritating little tricks. Oh. oh, I see. She's an attractive woman. Is there any chance you might fall in love with her? Fall in love with her? Why, I... Why do you ask that? I'll agree to a divorce immediately. Am I supposed to laugh at that? <laughs> Anything you like. You staying long, Holiday? One or two days. That's quite enough. Of course, with such lovely people around, I may decide to postpone my departure until... This evening. <laughs> oh, you love us once you get used to us, Holiday. How glad it takes a little doing. Hello there. Well, I see you two have met. Yes, we've met, Alex. Oh, where's Martha? Oh, she's gone to the lake. Well, I think I'll take a little walk. Nice to have met you, Holiday. Thank you. See you later. Well, Dan? Charming people. Lovely people. In fact, I've never met two such delightful personalities. <laughs> Means you've met Martha, too. Oh, yes. And, um... What do you think? Well, if I'd known, I'd have brought my two-edged sword, the big one. Dan, maybe you'd be a little sour if you had 20 million slip away from you like we have. Ah, if Bernie Trendler hadn't shown up, you, Henry, and Martha would have had the whole watermelon. Seeds and all. But now... We... Ruth! Dan, that was Ruth. Which way? Where is she? I left her in her room. Come on, Ruth! Ruth! Which way? At the end of the hallway. Ruth, darling, what's the matter? Stay with her, Alec. I'll see what it is. Now, dearest, it's all right. Please, it's all right. Alec, come over here. No, don't go, Alex. Don't go. Stay where you are, Ruth. Look. <laughs> Dan, kill it. No, it's, it's harmless. It's a black snake. Harmless? Close the closet door until we can get a sack for it. <laughs> Alex, is, is this the kind of practical joke you meant? This is the kind they're getting to be. I see. Ruth. Where is it? It's all right now. Come on, let's get out of the room. Well, well, what's all the fuss? Take a look in that closet. Alex. Let her look. I'm willing to bet she put it there. You're more incoherent than usual, Alex. Mr. Holliday. What? What's in the closet? A snake. Really? Well, how nice for Ruth. I'll slap that smirk off your face. Bravo, Alex. I've been thinking about it for years. Well, Henry, this is the first indication I've had that you could think for years. Oh, stop it! Uh -huh. Stop it, all of you! Get out of here, Alex. <laughs> Hurry. Come on, darling. Now, what's all the excitement? It seems that Ruth found a snake in her closet. Oh, I, uh... 
I thought you went to the lake. You do a great deal of thinking, don't you? When I have to. Then stop thinking about me. Did you put that snake in there? I never touched the thing. Sorry. Were you at the lake? That, Mr. Holliday, is none of your business. I'll leave you to your snake. <laughs> oh, did something strike you funny, Henry? <laughs> yes. You should feel really flattered, Holliday. Flattered? Why? My wife remembered your name. Oh, it was a lovely household. Hate dipped from the rafters. I could feel it. Well, why should anyone take it out in stupid, vicious pranks such as that snake in Ruth's closet? Why? It was before dinner that I decided to take a walk with Alex. He talked, I listened. First, it was amusing. A frog in one's bed, clothes missing from the bathhouse at the lake, wild, incredible phone calls for all of us. How long has this been going on, Alex? Just about a week now. Have you any idea who it is? None. But why, then? Why should anyone want to frighten Ruth out of her wits? Does Martha hate Ruth? Martha hates everyone. Martha's a chronic congenital hater. But what does she have against Ruth? That's it. Not a thing in the world. Has everyone been a victim of these pranks? Yes. Dan, they've got to stop. Yeah, I can see what you mean. Oh, how's Ruth? Yeah, she's all right. We changed rooms. She won't go near the one we had. Oh, it was a harmless snake. Obviously, no one meant to harm Ruth. Oh, no. Just frighten her half to death. Why don't you leave, Alex? As a potential heir, that'd be a little ridiculous, wouldn't mm -hmm. it? I see. What about Henry and Martha? Hmm. They won't leave. Not as long as they can stay here free. Hmm. Well, look, you say these things started about a week ago. Are you sure? Yes. They started just like that. No warning, no talk of pranks or jokes. None. And they're getting worse. Vicious. I give up. No, Dan, please. Well, what do you want me to do? Obviously, the person or persons doing these things won't admit it. Apparently, he or she intends to go on with it until... Go on? Until... Until what? Until the person gets to the real reason. The real objective of his viciousness. Who, Dan? Who? The person he or she means to kill. And now, back to Death is No Joke. Another Box 13 adventure with Alan Ladd as Dan Holliday. Maybe I was right, maybe I was wrong. Maybe no one wanted to kill anyone. And there was nothing we could go to the police about. What do you say in a case like this? Somebody's playing jokes? And what about my host, whom I hadn't seen since my arrival? Well, I saw plenty of him that same evening after dinner. There were five of us in the library. Alex and Ruth, Henry and Martha and myself. What little conversation there had been was down to an occasional cough. Everyone was as jittery as a rookie pitcher facing the Yanks for the first time. Then... I'm glad all of you are together for a change. <laughs> Bernie, how nice to see Sit you. Sit still. What's the matter, Bernie? You look... I'm mad? I am. What's all that? A book and some pictures. Oh, Stay where on. you are, Henry. Oh, very well. This evening when I went to my room after dinner, I discovered someone had been there before me. Who, oh, Bernie? It could have been you, Cousin Martha. Oh, please, not in front of Henry. Oh, what difference does it make? Shut up! What are you getting at, Bernie? Look, this is an old high school annual of mine. Oh, no, not that. Next, you'll bring out the albums. If I remember correctly, you were the only baby who managed to look positively gruesome lying on a table. I said shut up! Sorry. What about that annual, Bernie? Every single picture of me has either been defaced or cut out. What? Well, let's see. Keep your hands off. Yes, but I only want... Now, look, Bernie. All right, Dan. Mm. Every picture. Cut out or to face. That's right. And these pictures that were hanging in my room and in the study. Look. Why, you've been cut out of all of them. And I want to know who did it. I'll speak up. Which one of you was it? I swear if I find out, I'll tear his throat out. No one moved or said a word. Bernie Trendler's face was as white as a sheet. His eyes crinkled into slits that glared from one of us to the other. I looked at the others. They were scared. Yes, even Martha was afraid to open her mouth. Then after a few seconds... I warn you, I warn you, whoever's doing this, unless it's stopped and stopped immediately, I'll do something about it. Do you hear? I want to stop! Bernie, please, you're frightening me. I, I'm sorry, Ruth. I, I think I'm going to bed. If you're doing these things, Martha, take my warning seriously. If I were doing them, Bernie, they'd be worse than they are. Good night. And if I find any snakes, I'll let you know. Alex, I want to get out of here. I want to go home. Ruth, everything will be all right. I can't now, stand any more of this. I want to get out of here. All of them hating each other. 
truth. It's true. Maybe she's got some. I have. You hate Bernie. You hate my... Ruth, you... stop it. Stop it. Take her upstairs, Alex. Go ahead, please. All right. Come on, Ruth. Come on. Well, I guess the party's over. I'll turn in, too. Just a moment, Henry. Yes? I hope you know I meant what I said. <laughs> Why, look at me. Get out of here. Go to your room. Thank you. I will. Good night. And close the door after you. Uh, I'm sorry for that display of temper holiday. This nonsense has been too much. I don't suppose you have any idea who's behind it. No, but this is the last straw. I wonder if there'll be any more. Huh? Why do you say that? I wonder if this is the last joke. It'd better be. Suppose it's not. Then I'll send for the police. And tell them what? That someone's been playing jokes? They're facing and ruining these books and pictures is vandalism. They meant quite a bit to you, didn't they? Of course they did. High school annual and photographs. Oh, when were the pictures taken, Bernie? Oh, years ago, 15, 16 years ago, when I was in high school. Why? I was just thinking. It's very strange that only those photographs of you in athletic costumes should have been destroyed. Uh, what? Let me see. You're right. That's odd. Very odd. Oh, uh, here's one of you that hasn't been destroyed. Well, let me look at it. <laughs> 17 years old. What happened when you were 17, Bernie? What do you mean? Just that. Nothing. Nothing that I can remember? But something that someone else could remember. What the devil are you talking about, Holiday? I don't know yet. Maybe I'll find out. Not being able to sleep, I went for a walk in the moonlit garden. Suddenly, I heard voices. A man's and a woman's coming from the garden house. The I walk closer. I don't know why I agreed to meet you out here in the first place. Oh, you don't. Well, I think so. What do you want? Just a small, tiny cut of the 20 million. What makes you think I'd give it to you? What makes you think you won't? Lots of things. <laughs> How big a fool do you think I am? That's up to you. How big a fool can you make of yourself? Not quite as big as I can make of you. What's on that venomous mind of yours? Money. I don't mean that. Oh, <laughs> you were a fool, Bernie. A fool to bring that book and those pictures downstairs tonight. So I was a fool. Why? Don't forget that I used to visit this house as a child. I remember lots of things my stupid husband doesn't. And things other people don't remember. Such as? Well, let's put it this way, Bernie. Let's say, in those days you were... More gauche than you are now. Why, you... Oh, I could kill you for that. You would try to kill me, wouldn't you? With pleasure. But don't try it, Bernie. Because if you do, you'll be found out. What do you want? I told you. Think it over, cousin. You have until tomorrow morning. She left the garden house and passed me. I stood in the shadows and watched her. There was a little smile on her face. Then I looked toward the garden house. Bernie Trendler stood in the doorway. A shaft of moonlight struck across his face. And if ever a face showed murder, it was his. Why don't you tell me where you're going, Dan? I can't, Alex. I, I can't until I'm sure of what I think I know. What's all the mystery? Oh, snakes and phone calls and torn out pictures. You want to ride into town, is that it? Uh, yeah, that's right. Just drive me in. Okay. But let me in on something, will you? You have to let me in on something first. What? Had anyone seen Bernie Trendler before he showed up and claimed the money in the estate? Not for 15 years. Why? Who identified him? The lawyers. He had all the necessary stuff. You know, papers, letters from my uncle. I see. Now, uh, where's the high school he went to? Just outside of town. What the devil are you getting at? Where had Bernie been before he showed up to claim the estate? South America, he said. Uh-huh. Okay, take me to that high school. What's the matter? I... Dan, something's wrong with the brakes. Try the emergency. No good. Dan, we're picking up speed on this hill. Try to shift into second. Compression <laughs> of the engine will hold it back. Stay close to the left. Don't get near the embankment. What if someone's coming up the hill? We've got to take that chance. Where's the nearest side road? There isn't any. No turnoffs. Keep your hands on the wheel. That emergency's no good. 
Have you got any pedal at all with the foot brake? None at all. Look, scrape the side of the hill on the left. Go in easy. That'll slow us down. Yes, but Dan, we can't... Do it. It's our only chance. Okay. Again. Keep close and keep scraping. Dan, where are you going? Look. Someone cut through the brake fluid lines. What? Well, Dan, you're crazy. Why should anyone want to cut through Did the brake? Did you tell anyone we were coming into town? Sure, everyone knew it. Oh, that's great. Alex, you stay here and warn people away from this. Where are you going now? I'm going to high school. Well, I was right. I had to be right. After I left the high school with the information I'd found, I went to the sheriff's office, told him my story, and piled into his car. I picked up Alex on the way back, and then the Trendler house. There's Ruth. Ruth! Ruth! Better sit close, Sheriff. Alex, you were going so long. Never mind that. Where's Bernie? Bernie? Well, I don't know. Why? Hello, everybody. What's all the fuss? Hiya, Sheriff. What are you doing here? Henry, where's Bernie? Bernie? He and Martha went out on the lake. The lake? Yes, they went rowing. She can't swim. She's in a boat. She doesn't have to swim. That's what you think. Alex, is there a boat we can use? It's a speedboat tied up at the wharf. Well, come on, let's go. They can't have gone far in a rowboat. Dan, are you sure of what you told me? I'm positive. Got to get to them before there's a murder. A murder that looked like an accident. Now, there they are. Get more speed out of this. I can't, Dan. Barney? Barney! Look, he's rung for shore. Cut in ahead. I'll try to. Head him off. Where's Martha? Lying in the boat. Cut in faster, Alex. Faster. That's it. Don't let him get to shore. Get on. Get down here, shoot to kill. Get down. He's jumped for shore. Now, what if he gets away? Let him. He can be picked up later. Get to Martha. Martha! Martha! Keep this boat alongside. Is she all right, Dan? Yeah, she's just knocked out. He got away. Now he can't get far. Bernie, Bernie, don't. I, I won't tell. I... It's all right, Martha. He's gone. Oh! <gasps> Martha, Martha, you're all right now. He was going to kill me. Yes, I know he was going to kill you. Because you knew he wasn't the real Bernie Trendler. He hit me. And I... I saw him start to... But I... I couldn't do anything about it. Are you uh, all right now, Martha? I mean, are you all right? She's all right, Henry. I'll get it. It's probably the sheriff. I Hello? I suppose I should oh, thank yes, you, sir. Mr. Water. Holiday. Water. That might be nice. All thank right, you. Goodbye. They got him. Alive? Yes. You're right, Dan. Will someone please explain all this? The real Bernie Trendler is probably dead. Killed by the man who passed himself off as the real Bernie. Uh, isn't that right, Martha? I don't know anything about it. Martha? Oh, all right. I knew he wasn't the real Bernie last night. And you realized the pictures were defaced, cut out? Yes. Bernie Trendler was left-handed. Well, by George, that's right. Why, I remember now. You see, all those practical jokes were leading up to the destruction of the pictures. He couldn't get rid of them without attracting attention and suspicion. So he took the elaborate way out. The jokes would have stopped once he'd destroyed those pictures. Well, what about the high school, then? I, uh... I saw pictures there of the real Bernie in a baseball uniform with a baseball glove on his right hand. But well, how could he hope to get by with a fraud? Well, he did. Remember, the real Bernie was missing for 15 years. But what made you think of it, Dan? I mean, the left-handedness. Well, uh, let's say the real Bernie was gauche in those days. Oh. What's the matter, Martha? Uh, nothing. Nothing at all. I hope. Oh, gauche is French for left, isn't it, Martha? Yes. Yes, it is. Well, is there anything else to tell? Why are you two looking at each other like that? Well, I... I was just wondering. 
How much I have to thank Mr. Holliday for. Well, let's say you've already thanked me for everything. I knew it. I knew it. You you go away someplace and someone tries to kill you. Mm Mm-hmm. Tried to by cutting the brake lines, because he thought I'd guessed. Oh, and just think, those two nasty people will get all that money. Oh, not all. Alex will get his share, which is all I care about. And you didn't tell what you heard in the garden house. Now, why should I, Susie? Well, I think that's carrying Chevrolet too far. Chevrolet? Oh, (laughs) good night, Susie. Next week, same time, through the courtesy of Paramount Pictures... Alan Ladd stars as Dan Holliday in Box 13. Box 13 is directed by Richard Sandville with this week's original story by Oren Blackstone. Original music is composed and conducted by Rudy Schrager. Part of Susie is played by Sylvia Picker and production is supervised by Vern Carstensen. Box 13 is a Mayfair production from Hollywood. Watch for Alan Ladd in his latest Paramount Pictures.